need R2 for others to join. Mm. So initially this stream was supposed to be about quantum programming. I explained in Code Forces that uh, I, f I think it's a bad idea because I should read much, much more about it to make a valuable stream. So instead, let's do hash code, Google hash code. Uh, hash code is an optimization competition where you have one problem and you have a few hours to solve it as good as you can. And there is no known polynomial solution usually for such a problem. And so these are usually NP hard like TSP problem that uh, so for example given a set of cities you must find the best possible order of them to visit them to minimize the total distance traveled uh, there are no very good solutions for that one and it's about whoever will get the best score uh, hello Irakli uh, so you can ask questions in live chat I will try to answer them and my plan is to talk about the last year's edition, about the two problems that were given then during the qualification round and the final round. And uh, then mm, we can talk a little bit about the coming qualification round this year. The registration for Hashcode 2019 ends tomorrow. So you must hurry if you want to create a team. And the, I think the, the round itself is on Thursday, so four days for, from now, or uh, five days. It's Saturday, today, Sunday, so it, in four days. Uh, good afternoon. How long duration are you going to make this stream? I'm not sure about it, maybe two hours. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So what you see here is the uh, main website of Hashcode. Uh, I usually access it just by googling Hashcode and clicking the first link. Uh, you can register here. But what I'm interested in is archive where we can see past editions. And today I will first talk about uh, this qualification round problem self-driving rights and then a little bit about city plan. Uh, I was competing last year uh, with a team and we actually won the qualification round. I'm not entirely sure about our place in the final round. I think we got sixth, uh, but I see no standings, which is bad. Um, and I think we were very close to winning because we only, um, like, let's say, lost by a lot in some small test something that was supposed to be solved by hand let's say uh, and i will talk about it more later on uh, are the questions real though uh, so the the problems are inspired by the real world a little bit but they are simplified so it would be possible to understand the statement in a few minutes and code something in an hour let's say the competition is five hours or so. Um, in real life, it's slightly more complicated. Um, and it's harder to, sometimes it's harder to measure the score because here it's a competition. So we must have some score uh, assigned for our solution. Uh, for And if you, for example, want to schedule something like taxi drives, that was the qualification round problem here last year. Uh, then it's not all there. The scoring depended only on the total waiting time or something like that. Uh, while in real life, it's a bit more complicated. So maybe somebody doesn't want to wait a lot and we should penalize for waiting more than 10 minutes. I participated in Hashcode 2017, but couldn't qualify to the finals. It was too tough. The question was on distributing videos to servers to reduce latency. Yeah, so if you have time, it's good to uh, practice on previous year's uh, problems with your teammates. Nice initiative. This really changes how to approach these kind of questions. Uh, yep, so we will talk a little bit about that. Hi, Mislav. Uh, 
So I guess we can start. My name is Richter. This channel is uh, mainly about competitive programming. And today I will talk about Google Hashcode optimization problem. Uh, 30, uh, 44 viewers. Yeah. Uh, so I'm also glad about the numbers, but it's it will likely go down a little bit in minutes. Uh, so uh, hash code past problems. A qualification round from a year ago was about self-driving rides. Uh, what um, so self-driving taxis. Uh, there's always a short story introduction here. Millions of people com commute by car every day, for example, to school or to their work workplace. Self-driving vehicles are an exciting development for transportation. They aim to make traveling by car safer and more available while also saving commuters time. In this competition problem, we'll be looking at how a fleet of self-driving vehicles can efficiently get commuters to their destinations in a simulated city. And here we assume a lot about a city, so I know a problem, so, uh, I don't have to read it all. We assume that a city is a regular grid where there are vertical and horizontal lines, uh, each crossing is like, everything looks the same, every building has size one by one, and uh, it, the, the distance to travel, the time to, to travel is just the sum of x distance plus y distance so the manhattan it's called manhattan distance usually i think we also assume that we know all the planned drives for the day uh, which is also not so real world and what are we supposed to do mm, given a list of pre-booked rides in a city and fleet of self-driving ve vehicles assign the rides to vehicles so that riders can get to their destinations on time for every ride that finishes on time or too early, you will earn points proportional to the distance of that ride, plus an additional bonus if the ride also started precisely on time. Uh, so there will be then problem description, uh, map definition, vehicles, time and distance, rides. Uh, so rides is the description of the input also. Well, uh, we are given the start of a ride, starting intersection, finish intersection, early start, what means when a person, let's say, orders a ride. So if somebody orders a taxi for 1 p.m., we can't take him before 1 p.m. Maybe we can slightly after that. Then latest finish when they want to arrive to the destination. Uh, then simulation, so it described how the process looks like. So if you schedule some someone for this hour, then what happens? It describes that vehicle after making a ride, it should go get another passenger. Uh, I think here passengers can't share rides. And then input data stream, uh, input data set. Uh, describes file format so we are given the input file that we can download uh, here is example input file on the right they explained what it means so the first line is the number of rows and columns in the grid so in the city then the number of vehicles you can use the number of rights scheduled rights that you want must uh, uh, that you must provide vehicles to, and then bonus for arriving earlier and uh, 10 steps. I'm not sure about that. Number of steps in the simulation, so like number of seconds or minutes. And then the description of rights. Submissions, and here they describe how our submission should look like. And what is much different than, for example, Code Forces rounds or almost any other competition is that we instead of submitting a, a program in a lang in programming language we only submit a solution and this is uh, a solution meaning the schedule here of rights of what our vehicles should do what means that uh, if you're really fast you don't even have to use a program you can do everything by hand and that's fine uh, then scoring is described and here roughly we want to um, get as much rights as possible with time. Uh, 
what is prerequisite of hash code? Is it is enough algorithms, data structure, and higher mathematics? There are no maths. Data structures might be useful, but it's mostly about your ideas. I would say greedy ideas. Maybe it's a little bit about knowledge what can be done in optimization problems. Uh, for example, it's good to know how you would solve TSP problem. Well, I will talk about that later. But you can compete just knowing one programming language, and that's fine. No quantum, to, quantum today. Yep, sorry about that. I changed my plans. Uh, so quantum is too complicated. Maybe another time. Uh, are you still taking English lessons? You mispronounced vehicles. Uh, maybe I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not taking English lessons. That was my plan, not something that I'm doing. When did the stream start? 10 minutes ago. Uh, vehicle. I can't, uh, I don't know how to read that. Uh, so that, mm, like this alphabet. I will check that later. And hello, Redstone. Back to the problem. Uh, during, you can participate in a team up to four people and it's good to cooperate for sure. And I will talk about both how to start during the actual contest and how to maybe distribute the work, the job. Uh, in, in my team, one person was responsible for visualization. I think I have some drawings. Uh, so I have, I found uh, my directory with all the files from Hashcode 2018. So I have qualification round. And I have, uh, here I don't have visualization, but we will have those for the final problem that I will talk about later. For example, I have something uh, like that. Uh, it was a problem about p putting building in a city. Let's say something like SimCity, but simplified a lot. Uh, here I don't have drawings, but when during a contest, when you submit a problem, you will see visualization provided by the contest organizers. So after submission, not only you see your score, but also we see how the rights looked like. Uh, and it's useful. So check that out after submitting something. But uh, that guy responsible for visualization also, for example, examined uh, how much of our score is from doing very long rights. And thanks to such statistics uh, th that he did in Python, I don't know, in Jupiter, I'm not sure. Um, we knew that it's very important to care about very long rights because there were some like very special rights and we had to specifically do something for them. And I see some short history of codes. And the first one will be here, pro, like program.cpp, which is I first something that we had after half an hour, maybe an hour, uh, which is a program with struct for a write that has starting point and end point. Can I make it bigger? Yeah. And um, we have ID with a function to read it and function that returns the length and then struct for a car that has, I guess it has a an attribute where it is right now, in which row and which column, and when it is available next time. It's ID, then some functions, and in the main we just read the input, uh, read the writes and cars description. I see here that I tried random shuffle writes, but then instead I sorted them by when they should start, and I assigned them one by one this way, and for every write, I'm looking through, uh, through cars and I think I minimize the wasted time. So the wasted time is if some car had a ride earlier, mm. 
if some car had a right. Like that. And then the next right is here. He finished here at moment, let's say 50. And here we have moment at moment 70, some new passenger will appear here. And I consider for a car going from this place here, let's say it's a distance 15. Then I want to measure how much time this car wastes between arriving at the his previous position here. So here some pass passenger went out. Then I travel for 15 minutes up to this place and wait for a few more minutes. So then I will say that wasted time is 20. Because it doesn't matter here that uh, I go for 15 minutes, because anyway, I wait for five minutes for the new passenger to show up. So I think the wasted time is maximum max of uh, time two minus time one and distance. Time two minus time one is the difference of times between new passenger arriving here and the previous passenger getting out here. And I just take a car that has minimum wasted time. And then we print, we print score uh, to standard error output, just to see whether this score I computed matches what I will see in the system, hash code system, when I submit, to make sure I'm calculating everything correctly, and I print that. So it's a very basic solution. That was my first idea. Uh, well, maybe more basic would be to just s schedule the first car available, but it's more reasonable to minimize the wasted time. Uh, yep. And I think at that moment it was enough to get into top three or something. Uh, am I participating in hash code? Yes, I am. Uh, I have a team, quite strong one, so I hope we will advance again. Uh, and that's the first program. Then back to the distribution of work. Uh, so there are four guys. Uh, that year I was the strongest coder, so I was responsible for coding everything. One guy was for visualization. One guy for, was for analyzing the inputs. So he didn't even see my solution. He just took the input files, which you can download in the on the website. Let's see that. Uh, download five file. And here you see all the input files that you should process. A example, B should be easy, C no hurry, D metropolis, E high bonus. Even the name can give you a hint. Here E high bonus was a file where there was a big bonus for arri arri arriving early or something like that. So there's a bonus in the input and here it's huge. So maybe a different program should be written for E or at least different parameters should be tried here. And uh, what, also, what is also important is that the, the files are differ a lot in size. So this is the first, uh, this is B. It has 800 vehicles and 1000 rights or the other way around. Well, E has 1500 and 2000. Uh, no, no, these are dimensions of the grid, and then here we have 10,000 writes. Well, here we have 10,000 as well. Here, only 300. I'm not sure here which number is what in the input. Also, new lines are broken because uh, the file is for Linux uh, instead of Windows. I think I should open that in uh, Microsoft Vi Visual so it would work. Uh, let's extract that. Can I? Mm. One moment. And now I can open that with Microsoft Visual. 
Um, so here is a file. Uh, that was the first line with grid dimensions and so on. And someone in a team can take each file and analyze it. Of course, not just by, not just with eyes, but he can do some statistics with a program. Maybe the visualization guide can do it. Then, uh, what happens later? Oh, and we have we had a Google document shared, so each of us could access it with all the observations about files. Regarding the size of files, since the score is the for every write you get some score, and what matters in the whole leaderboard is the sum of scores, then for this easy for this small um, file small test you can get only let's say score of 1 million i don't remember numbers well in a big test like this one you can get a score of what 50 million and it means that you should fo you should focus on big tests so take that in mind also the leaderboard only shows the total score, so you don't know um, for every file what scores your opponents have. That would be useful because maybe you would see, hmm, we, in C we have 2 million while some team has 4 million, so there is a big room for improvement, but there is no such thing in the leaderboard. And uh, it actually hurt us a lot last year during the finals because we had the best score on one of the big tests in the other big test also it was very nice but in like test c that was very special we had something like 4 million while some team had 10 million and uh, we lost because of that uh, who's in your team uh, my team consists of I will show you the guys in uh, forces. Marek Sokolowski, and MNBV Mar, uh, Marcin Smu, this guy, Marcin Smulevich, and uh, Julek Straszynski. That is a captain of our team, that is responsible for registration of our team, so I hope he did that. Uh, and last yeah, last year I had a completely different team. Uh, next, uh, let's get back to the problem. And what can we do smarter? Mm. Okay, so of course, first minutes of the contest you should read the problem. Every person should read the problem, and then you should distribute the work. Maybe two pro. If you had more than one idea for an approach. Maybe two people should independently try to uh, code something, but it's at least good to share the, um, how you read the input. So after uh, first, even before, I think even before finishing with the statement, what I did is I've created those structs for write, for car, and there are also the functions for reading. And I shared this code with my teammates so that everybody would use the same format, at least for those who use uh, C++, because the visualization guy worked in Python. Uh, okay, and here we have some solution. I think this uh, minimize the wasted time is a very good thing. And uh, it was enough to be in the top of the leaderboard at the beginning of the contest. Um, Next, uh, generally for optimization problems, there are two things you can do. Let's head to, let's make some drawings. Uh, so for TSP, um, sorry, how to, maybe F11, okay. Uh, for TSP problem, traveling salesman, um, you are given a bunch of cities and you must find the best order to visit them and get back to the initial city. So maybe 
this is a good solution. Uh, but uh, so how to approach such a problem? What you first can do is write some greedy algorithm, maybe from every city go to the nearest one. And then what we would get is maybe starting from this city, go to the closest one, closest one, closest one, and so on. But then there will be some issues. Uh, so at the end, it will be uh, something not, op not optimal for sure. And then you can try to improve that. So maybe choose the closest city, but try not to leave something alone, like here in this in that blue path, I left this vertex and that's bad. Um, and so this first step is trying to um, find maybe something that is greedy or similar. So find some solution, like starting from some city, go to the next closest one. And then the second step is improve the score. In TSP, the most important part is the second one, improving the score, because you can even start with just the stupid order of cities 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So just like they are numbered. If city 1 is here, 2 is here, 3 is here, maybe just go in the order of numbers or just sort by X, whatever, but then improve. So for like 1 million times or maybe even 1 billion times, try swapping the order of two cities or swapping the order of three cities like uh, shuffling them or taking some in this order uh, what is actually very good for tsp is when you have some order some solution take some interval and try to reverse it so consider this order and this makes sense a lot because if these are next to each other, then likely in the sequence, then likely they are already close. So it makes sense to still leave them next to each other, but still we want some changes considered. And then there are harder algorithms like simulated annealing. And maybe so, but the simpler one is to try to shuffle a little bit to improve a little bit as long as you can so try for try millions of iterations and you will improve and improve your score uh, here in the problem about taxi rides uh, the issue with improvement is that if you change something in this the whole schedule everything that is later changes a lot in the tsp it's easy to swap something in the middle, nothing changes later. Here, if you say that this taxi, instead of going that way, should take a different ride, everything later changes as well. Uh, instead, maybe in the problem about taxis, it's good to think about making a graph where the fact that from one ride we go to another, to another one is an edge, directed edge, so uh, the fact that some ve vehicle will take some rides is a path, but still in this path we care when the taxi will get to every ride, so it's not so easy to improve something. And this is why in this problem we focused on the read part. And uh, here I just thought how to improve that stupid algorithm to just minimize the wasted time and schedule every next car. Um, okay. Um, and you should do it in such a way that your program can run for a few seconds. If you do the improvements, then your program should run for a few seconds to improve and improve. But eventually, when you want to submit something at the end, let it run for a few minutes or maybe even one hour. But while it runs and improves the score, uh, you should do something else to try to improve a different test, maybe. Mm, okay. Uh, 
F11. Let's answer some questions. Mm. Oh no, uh, it refreshed for me. So, is dynamic programming significant for hash code? And in past years was task that was solved with dynamic programming. Not entirely solved with dynamic programming, but it's useful to know different techniques, also segment trees and so on. So maybe it will help you to do something smarter or faster. I think the MST is too approximate to also exist for TSP, relaxing the constraint that vertices can be visited again. Yeah, uh, likely those problems are not about good A approximation algorithm because it's bad. It's better if you do something stupid, but that tries to improve. And in, in practice, it will be worse than the optimal solution only by like 1%. So the knowledge of known algos that are at least in some good uh, possible to be proved, it isn't helpful here. Do you have any piece of advice regarding the team organization during the contest? Everyone working on his own solution, how do you organize? I, I already talked about that a little bit. Uh, so I don't think we should work separately. Mm. It's bad to work separately and like everybody does their own stuff. Maybe one person should be a, like captain and decide what everybody does. And before the contest, discuss who is good in coding, who is good in ideas. So also in our team, uh, one guy, instead of implementing something, he was to think about ideas, possible versions, maybe analyze what our solution does right now and how to improve that. And I implemented that, those ideas. Um, now let's open, um, let's open the next version of my problem. Pro to CPP. Uh, so the ver next version of my solution. And here we see some strange stuff like is good if when end greater than 40,000 and when end smaller than 45,000 return false. Uh, so what is the reason for this if? We notice that at some moment of time in some test, it's bad to start a long ride because then you end almost outside the city, like somewhere on the border, because this is how the test look like, looks like, and you don't have enough time to get back to the city. So we decided to exclude some rides uh, like to force that. Uh, what else we have? Uh, we have some threshold uh, for what? Um, maybe this is some yeah I tried different grid algorithms at, at the beginning here you see something com commented there's random shuffle there is I think uh, we sort we sort rides by their values so the like the distance and then choose only some of them and others I think here we wanted to ex exclude very short rides because they don't contribute much to the score so let's not do that, do that. Because anyway, a car must be busy to get there, do the ride. Maybe because of that, we will miss a long ride that gets us more points. Here I see that uh, like what 50 million times I tried to take two rides and swap them. Yeah, so I did, like I tried the order of rides apparently. I think here I experimented with uh, considering only one vehicle and um, that, that should um, serve all the rights. Not sure about that. And what else we see here? Also some 15,000 times do something. There is random shuffle cars, sort them with some comparator um, by when. So by time, then we choose only some of them for every car. Okay, now for I sort rides by something and for every car, I try to schedule its all the rides that he will get. So previously I iterated over rides and then for every next ride, I chose the best car. Here instead I, I tried for every car, starting from car zero, then car one, then car two, decide what rights it will get. 
And I think it was a bad idea and it didn't work well. Here I see some strange uh, ifs. So for every possibility, I assigned a value. Um, so wasted was how much time is wasted. And then if the length of the write is big and it ends before some moment of time, then I penalize it. I say wasted times equal to 0.5. Uh, what means I don't want such writes. I don't want big writes that end after that moment because apparently I don't have enough time to get back to the city. And this came from analyzing the tests. Here I see if something is at some up to some moment and then with that length, wasted time is increased by far, I think, was the distance from the middle of the city times something. And this constants, this constants should be chosen by hand, uh, like more or less something that is reasonable. If wasted time is usually around 1000, then for this special penalty, you want to add maybe extra 200. So add a reasonable constant. And after I implemented something here, I sent this code to a teammate. Uh, I think someone who wasn't so busy right now, so I would I would jump to the next implementation while that teammate tried the different constants here. And I was the one who understands the code best, so it was better if I continue working on the code and uh, while he tries different constants and checks what ifs make sense here in practice. Just changing something, running it again for five seconds to see what score we get on the tests. And then here I wasted minus equal, wasted was the penalty, the wasted time. And here mine subtracting means I reward for when would finish greater than some. I think this is the, the end of game time. And I say, if you finish the right just before the end time, it's awesome because you perfectly used the time. And because after the last ride of a car, the issue is it wastes time till the end. If everything ends at the moment, let's say 6 p.m., if a car ends at 5.59, it's awesome. Well, if it ends at 5.50, it will waste those 10 minutes doing nothing. And uh, I think also we can run the same thing many times. So here you see that 15,000 times I'm trying to run the same. And I guess uh, I shuffle it a little bit. I change it a little bit and I choose the best score. The solution giving the best score. Uh, I remembered I ran my program for for one hour and I accidentally exit the program and lost all the computations. Do you have any tips for this? You can uh, dump your solution every five minutes, for example. Maybe your program should write should write what it has to a file every some number of minutes or seconds or iterations, so it wouldn't be wasted. Or just run your program for five minutes, and then save what it computed to a file. If you want to run it for more time, then let it read it from the file. It kinds of, it's similar to dumping a memory. Who is the coder in your team this time? Uh, I think we, um, I think we are without Martin Smulevich uh, during the qualification round because he's busy. He's, I don't know, outside the Warsaw. So there are only three of us. And Marek is the best coder but I think I'm most experienced in optimized like approximation problems. So we are still to discuss this, but I would suggest that um, I and Marek will code something both. Maybe we will, like I said in drawings, uh, that there are two parts usually, greed, like some greedy at the beginning and then improvement. And we'll just split one uh, so we will first build uh, the same like one of us will implement reading everything making structs then we will uh, simultaneously write something uh, for example maybe i will choose that greedy stuff at the beginning and then 
will say that what my part produced will be given to his program where we improve something. And I think Ulek will be uh, responsible for visualization and analyzing tests. Uh, okay. Then I see Pro Free CPP. So the the most advanced, I guess, program. Do I see something here? Mm, yeah, I see, for example, that done of I means that this write is already scheduled. And if some length is smaller than 1000 and it's far away from the middle of the city, uh, then I marked it as done. What means I don't want to do this right at all. I mentioned that earlier. Um, then there are just, I guess, smarter ifs. Uh, if cho while chosen size greater than 100 chosen popback, maybe it means that a vehicle can do at most 100 rides. I don't know. Uh, also, I saw a file new CPP which means, I guess, some different version of a program, but I think it's a, one of earlier versions because it's very short. Mm, so it's about experimenting with a few different approaches. Here it was important to try that first approach for every next ride, give, uh, choose the best car for that ride, or later we did for every next car, choose rides for these cars. And this will lead in that completely different solution. What is your hash code achievements? I mentioned that in the description below. I was first last year in the qualification round and then sixth on the final round. And it was my only time participating. So this will be my second uh, edition. Uh, so I guess we can move to the final problem, final round, uh, which is here. It was about sit making a plan of building in a city. Nice, congratulations, thanks, Newman. Uh, let's view a problem. And that problem, maybe there is some visualization or not. Nope. Uh, I think instead I will open my own from the so again one guy did like drawings in python uh, this is quite complicated maybe something okay i think this is better uh, so we were given dimensions of a city and we we're supposed to put some buildings there in such a way that for every building that has uh, citizens there it, there, it should be close to a shop, close to a haircut and so on, uh, to different city utilities. I guess that here pink means, uh, I'm not, I don't remember, pink might mean uh, building with citizens. And then um, around that, we try to put those facilities or utilities, uh, like shops. And the score is the total happiness of people, I guess. So for every person, he wants some shop to be close by. He wants some haircut to be short, uh, to be close by, sorry, and so on. Uh, and it was a bit about fitting puzzles to each other, like uh, puzzle pieces to each other. So now let's see a problem statement. Again, short introduction, the population of the world is growing and becoming increasingly concentrated in cities. According to the World Bank, global urbanizations, the per, uh, ur urbanization, the percentage of the world's population that lives in cities crossed 50% in 2008 and reached 54% in 2016. The growth of urban areas creates interesting architectural challenges. How can city planners make efficient use of urban space? How should residential needs be balanced with access to public utilities such as schools and parks? Task. Uh, 
Given a set of building projects, your task is to decide which of the available projects to build and where in order to maximize residential capacity and availability of utilities to residents. And then again, problem description, some formal definitions like uh, sizes of cities, the fact that buildings are of two types, residential with people and utilities of different types. Then building plan. Every building project includes a plan of the constructed building, what means that in the input they say how a building must look like. Here, uh, so this is input example. They described some residential building with people that has, I guess, there's a description here. Residential building, three rows, two columns, capacity is 25, I guess the number of people. And the, this is the shape of this building. So we, we can put a building of this type anywhere on the map, even in multiple places, but it must be of exactly this sh shape. I don't remember if it was allowed to rotate pieces. Uh, I don't remember that. Then uh, we must, on this grid of size 4 times 7, we must put buildings of these types to maximize the score. And the score was defined uh, is defined here. For every residential building with a capacity of R people, the submission will earn R points, R points for every type of utility service accessible to the residents of that building. Uh, so mm, accessible means either that it touches the building of utility type or maybe there is some range. So like park should be within distance five. And uh, so what you do first during a contest is read the problem, make sure you understand that, analyze the sample test that is explained at the at the end here analyze that you like make sure you understand what the score is here and why and then uh, you can open here it's very important to open the input files because depending on them maybe we should do something completely different the question is are the buildings huge the statement here says that uh, the size of building is up to maybe 1000 times 1000 but Maybe input files are 50 by 50. Let's see that. And here uh, also names are meaningful. Be short walk, going green, white selection, precise fit, different footprints. So maybe in precise fit we should exactly put uh, pieces to each other, different footprints. Maybe there's a lot of building available, uh, white selection, a lot of building for sure, going green, short walk. Short walk likely means that buildings have to be close to each other. We can open uh, some of that and see how it looks like. So this is a shape of building. Uh, so buildings are quite small, like up to maybe six by six. Uh, let's see if it's also true for bigger files. Precise fit. So here we see a few uh, big pieces, bigger than in the first file, but there are only 20 buildings and you can if your program will have complexity for some reason like 2 to the power number of buildings it will work in this for this test then we have uh, here I guess a lot of building also some very big ones like this one but is it this one is very regular uh, and I think all buildings here are just rectangles Maybe it means that we should write a different program that will deal only with rectangles. And what can we do here? Uh, I think first what I implemented in this problem was just putting buildings one by one. Maybe first residential building, then utility, residential utility and so on. Just to see if I can, if I'm able to rotate. Let's see, rotation. Buildings plans can cannot be rotated or mirrored. We only decide where to place them. Okay, we don't have to. But still, uh, it's good to write something simple and make sure that we get some points for that, that we read the input correctly, that we print the output correctly, and we can end that our program can compute the score itself, and that the score will be equal 
to what the system will show us when we submit uh, the solution. Also, you can submit, I think, every minute or so. And uh, it, it isn't bad to just submit when you have something new. It only can help you in showing you a mistake. Mm. Okay, so I just did anything that will be kind of dense that will put every next building. Uh, let's open uh, what I want to open the visualization. Uh, so here, this like that. E. Okay, E, e is very interesting. Uh, so it's nice to have a visualization like this because when you implement something new you will see whether it does what you meant it to do or maybe there are some big uh, holes also if those i think white areas here mean white area means there is nothing here no building and here there is building of type 39 108 and if there are big white holes it means that my program is wrong and it should put buildings closer to each other. Mm. What about this B? Here it's very regular. Uh, I think this was the problem that is good to da be done by hand uh, to just... So 14 is a big residential building and then we have to put a lot of utilities around that. Uh, so what can we do? My first idea was to just put the residential utility, residential utility. Then I think what I did is uh, going the same way, but trying every next building in starting in the next cell on the right. Let's say finding the in the first not filled row, finding the first not used cell and trying every building there and seeing by what the score improves for every Mm, for every building and choosing the best option. And this is some greedy algorithm. Then you can try to improve that again by maybe taking a piece of a map. Uh, so in TSP we would just swap to, uh, swap two pieces. It's hard here because pieces or buildings have different sizes. So what I tried to do is taking a piece of map like this this one removing all the buildings here and trying to rebuild that maybe randomly maybe putting random buildings there and seeing whether we can improve the score but it didn't work well for me during the finals it was very hard uh, what you can also here see is that the map is quite small uh, if you estimate that I think here it's there are five cells here, maybe 50 here. I think this whole drawing is only like 200 by 200. And while the input says that the input is 1000 by 1000. This is because for a huge grid like 1000 by 1000, any computation that I do will run for m many seconds. If I want to try every building in the next place and I want to recalculate the score of the grid, I will have to wait one minute for my program to run. Even if I just want to, even if I just want to once go through the grid. What we did instead is we split the map into equal parts, into squares of size, let's say 100 by 100. Then we only found a solution for this part and then reproduce that. So put it multiplied uh like 100 times next to each other and if we decide that if we decide that it should look like that so here a residential building here a utility and here's some other utility a park maybe then we would later just take this copy and paste next next and so on and this is this is what we would submit to the system this isn't optimal because uh, this uh, in part in case of this problem uh, this building residential building 
if it already has red utility uh, as a neighbor and blue utility as a neighbor, it gains nothing from, again, red utility here and blue and here. But if we take a huge piece of map, like what we did was, I think, 100 by 100, then it doesn't matter much because you put some small buildings here and there. So the fact that here there is some building that is neighbors with red one here and blue one here doesn't matter where when you uh, copy this whole thing and put it below and on the right because this uh, this building will not be copy with itself here because here it will be a copy of the grid so it doesn't hurt much it would be perfectly better to estimate also the score correctly on the border here uh, because we don't care about that much but it's only a small fraction of the score and our program with this smaller grid if every dimension is smaller 10 times then the whole computation is faster 100 times and that's awesome uh, your coding is what age? Let's say 16. Can you please cover the pizza problem? I think for pizza problem you should watch the recent um, video by Google. It's by Google itself. Uh, let me try to find it. I think they made a video a few days ago. Um, Google hash code. Hmm. Life at Google. Life at Google. So I saw something in either Facebook or Twitter. Maybe somebody in the chat also saw it. They talked about pizza problem and uh, like hints they give and so on. I don't see it. So if I find it, I will later post a link in the comment below the video on YouTube. Mm, so I can't find it right now. Sorry. Uh, please allow subtitles in your videos. I do not know much English and can be useful for many. So I'm not the one forbidding the subtitles. They are not, YouTube doesn't provide subtitles in live streams. In my short videos, I write down subtitles myself. So they are there, but not in a live stream. Uh, can someone share the problem link? Well, you can open the Hashcode website and go to archive. What I'm talking about now is uh, fine. Like, um, so the, the website is here. I'm pasting a link. Uh, and the pizza problem is, let's go with pizza here, it's not, maybe pizza problem is a sample problem, I don't see it here. So first we talked about self-driving rights and now it's city plan. What else we have here? Oh, there are results, maybe I find myself here. Was I sixth? Yep, Warsaw Roberts. And so here you can see the total score. And we would get the first place if we knew that that problem, that test B or C was very special. And one of us should have uh, solved the, that problem by hand to see the pattern and copy that. And then we would win. We would win, sorry. Somebody also uh, said about teaming up with Gennady. I think Gennady was here. I'm not sure about which problem. Uh, did he win? Maybe. He sometimes wins those competitions. I'm tech is very good in those. Uh, let's see. So I see uh, some Peters, some guys from Petersburg, that, but not. Uh, so Gennady was in like top five. You can ex expect a lot of Russians to be high in the leaderboard. And here what we have, Russia, Belarus, Russia, 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 Russia plus Germany, I, uh, and then Poland, Russia, Russia, 
Macedonia. So this is what usually those leaderboards look like. Uh, which tool slip do you use to create such nice visualization? It is possible to share the with us. Uh, so I wasn't the one responsible for visualization. And uh, he used some tools in Python. Uh, so I also agree that something like that is useful. Mm, but so I, I don't know how to create them. Uh, so you need something that is able to color a square in a drawing and also put a number and then you have something like that. Also in he created during the qualification round he created some statistics uh, like uh, some graphs for example how much time we waste and how much score we get from long rides. Mm. What else is here? So can I Google at all hash code pizza problem? So is it a sample problem or what? Because I remember seeing it many times. Maybe it's on the main page here. It's involved rules for you. Uh, learn more. Okay, uh, so I can't find the pizza problem, but I saw it many times. Uh, yeah, the the previous years, the previous year was about what uh, streaming videos. I don't know that problem at all. This one I I've read once. It was about putting internet routers uh, on a grid where also some cells were walls or not. So you had to provide, put wires through a grid and also put routers in some places. Every router must, must be connected to the internet source by a wire so that every cell of the grid would have the internet connection. Maybe some uh, worse input sample. Example, yeah, uh, so this was the example input file. And here we see that there are walls and you can't put wires going through the walls. And there, uh, this, so a good approach here would be to try to distribute the routers quite like uh, evenly. And then maybe to try to improve it by putting, like pushing a router by one cell to some side and checking whether a score improves or not. And also you need some wire structure that is here, I guess, a tree. Then maybe it becomes an MST, MST problem. Mm. So then it turns out that some standard algorithms are useful. Okay, so we talked a little bit about hash code. Mm. Uh, during the end of the competition, by the way, last hour, maybe last two hours, what is useful, let's say last hour, is stop working on new stuff, take your program, your algorithm, uh, like what what did I have? Uh, I closed, uh, yeah, I closed my programs. Mm. Okay, and here I didn't talk at all about my program for the finals, which is uh, building placements. So let's see that. Uh, I have a struct for piece, uh, like boolean value, whether it's utility, int type, some standard stuff, some function to print it. And then mm, what do we do? We sort people by something, I guess the capacity. Uh, possible. Mark and mark. I guess mark is to put some building somewhere and to mark those cells are taken then i have unmark in case i want to uh, try to reschedule some part of a city would increase i check whether by putting a building somewhere i increase the score maybe um, i see some random shuffles random shuffles are often nice uh, 
I see a function improve. Improve <laughs> mark people. Okay, here is a solution for some particular test for sure. So this is to solve one particular test. I'm sure about that because I just hard coded how the pattern should should look like. Uh, then I guess the general code is here. But it's hard for me to understand now after a year. So I will not comment much about it. But I said what it does. Anyway, when you have some constants, like here I see a ratio 10 times uh, 3 plus ratio. Uh, in the qualification round, it's uh, more visible. I said I had those ifs special parameters after during the last hour I recommend that each member of a team gets a solution and like takes your, the implementation that the best implementation you have and focuses on one test and tries different parameters for that test like here I see some parameters to like rewarding for finishing uh, close to the end of time and then here are some commented parameters for penalizing for finishing at some moment and so on. So modify that parameters a little bit, run the program multiple times and in half an hour, an hour, try to find the best parameters to improve the score by that extra 1%. Uh, so spend the first four hours to just fight for good algorithm, good approach, then care about exact parameters. Make a vlog of your daily life schedule would be awesome to watch. Uh, no, thank you. I, I will stick to making some algorithmic content. Uh, okay. Uh, do you have some more questions about Google Hashcode? I think I talked about what I wanted to, to say. To describe here uh, the qualification rounds by the way happen in hubs uh, so in some places like your university you can when registering you can find the closest one to code together with others uh, hubs here list of hubs and uh, maybe there will be some goodies there I think in University of Warsaw we have pizza before a competition. Uh, so there are like, what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven hubs in Poland. There are some in Russia, but not a lot. And more of them in Europe, apparently. A lot in France. A lot in Belgium, apparently. Mm. So find the closest one and consider going there. The disadvantage is that you might want to uh, use something that is quite par powerful, a machine that is quite powerful. And I own both PC and laptop and my PC is stronger. So there, it is some disadvantage of going to university with a laptop uh, because I can do less computations in a few minutes right just cpu is twice slower let's say it doesn't hurt that much so don't, don't expect that it will be a difference of like getting from 15 like 50th to the first place it's more about finding for a few extra places so it increases your chances just a little bit and also maybe your teammates have better laptops if your is weak um, still I strongly recommend that all of you are in uh, in one place, so you would be able to communicate better. You can use different machines. Uh, I don't know if it's allowed to buy uh, like power CPU power um, in cloud, like Amazon. Uh, problems joining scoring. Amazon. So you would have to read the rules if you want to use that. But again, don't ex expect that it matters a lot. 
uh, I think I think it never happened to me that I would get much better place if given more horsepower. I think Hashcode was started from Google Paris, hence there's so many in France. Okay, but what about Belgium? There are also so many of them. And I think that up to two years ago, the finals were in Paris and now they are in Dublin. Uh, because I heard that Paris office is uh, building, like rebuilt or something. What is the word? renovation, make uh, and this is why they moved to Dublin and also Dublin has a lot of space in their office. Uh, good luck coming for the hash code, I pray for you to win this competition, thank you. So I just hope to advance to the finals and then uh, it's a fight for a win. Um, it will be slightly harder for us because there are only three of us but still uh, we are quite experienced in con programming contests, so I hope we advance. Uh, yeah, and I'm so on Thursday. If you are from Poland, from Warsaw, you can meet me on Thursday in University Hub. Uh, any more questions? Why does this doesn't work? French. But I have a chat here on the site. Mm, do you have the visualization guide this time? I think Ulek will be responsible for visualization. Uh, I told him a few days ago to learn it, if he doesn't know it. He says it's easy and there's nothing to learn, what likely means that he still doesn't know how to do it. Uh, but I hope he does before Thursday. Mm, and as I said, there is a visualization, some visualization provided by uh, organizers when you submit a solution, but it's limited and it will only show you something. If you want to modify it, if you want to check something else, it's useful to know how to do visualization. And Python is, I think, best for that because everybody uses it. So if I wanted to learn it, I would Google Python visualization or Python how to draw and some tutorial would pop up, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah, and this will be the end of today's stream. Uh, it was quite short, but well, there is nothing much more to talk about. Uh, schedule is yeah, qualification round. 28th, online qualification round results one week later mm, and final round at the end of April in Dublin if I remember correctly. So register today or tomorrow if you want to participate, find a team quickly. Uh, what do I have here? Okay, and I recommend you to go through some past problem together with your team maybe, sp spend at least three, four hours on that problem to see what might be useful to do and like uh, you will see something about your strategy maybe approaches uh, check what score you get for example on this i don't know taxi rides uh, maybe it's better to take a problem that is from one year ago not, not one year ago but three or four years ago because it's less likely that they will use something similar as a year ago. So contest organizers try not to do the same thing every year, but maybe a similar topic from three years ago will happen again. And uh, what I wanted to do. Yeah, uh, as I said, in the comment after, under the YouTube video, I will later post um, if I find the video made by Google a few days ago about the pizza problem with their hints and instructions, uh, I think they also said how to register. Mm, and if you're watching this after the stream, but only an hour after the stream, don't worry if the whole video is not available, 
because YouTube takes some time to process it and uh, first you will see only the end of the stream. In an hour or two, the video will be processed. You will be able to watch the stream from the beginning to the end. Uh, okay, uh, that was the Google hash code stream. Uh, if you want more competitive programming content uh, or just anything about algorithms, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel or following me on Twitch. I do streams in both places every time and sometimes I make some extra short videos for YouTube about, uh, I think, usually coding interview problems, but I want to also switch to uh, doing, maybe on a weekly basis, interesting problems from code forces and not code forces rounds. Uh, don't forget if you want to participate that today there is diff one plus two round that starts in three hours from now. Uh, I think I'm going to participate, participate, but we'll see about that. Uh, I see that in the, hmm. so the, the authors are two orange guys, which is fine. And they thank a lot of have you read guys. What means that likely the round is well prepared. And that's something that suggests we should participate because the round will be nice. Okay, so good luck in the round if you're going to participate. Good luck in on first day in the qual hash code qualification round. If I just hope that I will not be one place off the qualification list especially if some of you watching uh, me today will learn something from the stream and thanks to that beat me in the qualification round so that I wouldn't go to the finals. That would be sad. I, ho I hope it doesn't happen. And see you next time on the stream in a few days, I guess. Mm, we'll see about the topic and I will announce it in Code Forces and Facebook. The links to Facebook, Twitter and so on are in the description below the video if you want to follow me. See you and bye bye.